So I see some people are joining um, the QuirkBooks live feed. So um, I'm Kim. Um, I'm the illustrator uh, for the uh, picture book, E.T., The Extraterrestrial. Um, today we're just going to be drawing. Um, I'm going to be showing you how I drew E.T., and we're going to draw a few different ones. Um, I was thinking maybe we could do some painting maybe <laughs> um we'll see how it goes um so here we have just the cover of et the extraterrestrial book um it's a real fun one to have worked on um oh also um if you're partic participating in the book pop, pop challenge um the code um is phone home um so you can use that um, for the challenge. All right, so um, let's start uh, drawing E.T. <laughs> um, he's such a fun, weird little alien guy. Hold on, let's just make sure. So kind of when I was designing E.T., I wanted to make sure he was super cute. Um, because I know a lot of people growing up, they I, I always hear that he was kind of um, scary, I guess. Um, so I wanted to make sure we captured all the cuteness um, that's kind of echoed in the film. So he has kind of like this funny, almost triangular shaped head, I guess, that kind of recedes into the back. Hmm, let's see. And he's kind of got this pear shaped body. I think I usually draw him a little bit chubbier. And he's got these really long arms that sort of kind of hang down beside him. So if you guys have any questions about the process, sorry, I find it sometimes hard to draw and talk at the same time. Um, but if you guys have questions about the process and how I made the book and kind of how I go about sketching, um, feel free to ask any questions um, and I'll try to answer them my best. Um, let's give him another go. Let's see. Maybe we can draw him, I think. My favorite part of E.T. and drawing the book was um, when he was kind of dressed up as um, kind of in that wig and that little dress. Um, so maybe we'll give that a go. Um, so, 
question was, do I start on paper or do I mostly work digitally? Um, so when I start all of my drawings, um, they're always started with pencil and paper. Um, I just like to put all the rough ideas down first. I find, especially when I'm drawing a character with a lot of um, emotion or um, trying to figure out the pose and make sure and making sure I capture the scene right um, at the beginning, I find it always best just to sit down with a pencil and paper. For me, working digitally, I get um, too concerned about all the little details and finicky things first. Um, so I find it easier if I can just sit down with a pencil and paper and kind of scribble it out first because it feels a little less precious, a little less like I have to um, get everything right the first time around. Um, so I guess I always, even when I'm drawing characters in little costumes, I always kind of start off with the, their base first kind of get the idea of the body. So if we're drawing him with his funny little dress and like wig outfit, I always draw kind of the body underneath first. And my drawings are usually pretty sketchy um, when trying to figure things out. There are a couple new projects coming up. Um, but unfortunately I can't announce anything quite yet, but definitely keep your eyes peeled. Um, and hopefully within the next couple of months, you guys will be able to um, find out about some of the new projects we have coming up. So actually his fingers are usually kind of folded in a little bit. So the next question is, how many times did I watch the movie um, while I was illustrating the book? So I always start off um, when doing these movie book projects, like Home Alone and The X-Files as well. Um, I always start off by watching the content at least twice. Um, so with E.T., I watched the movie, I think, two times all the way through. And then I would go back in certain pages and kind of look at those scenes again and have to rewatch them to make sure I could uh, kind of like see all the little details in the film and see what I could add in because of course like a two hour long um, film you can't adjust or you can't um, put everything on paper. Um, so I kind of pick out my favorite things about certain scenes and uh, try to incorporate those in the pages. So I think all in all, it might be that I watched the movie maybe, I don't know, four or five times, maybe in total. So it's quite a few. I think I saw the question, did I always want to be an illustrator? Um, the simple answer is no. Um, growing up, I wanted to be a uh, veterinarian. I loved science and I loved um, animals and that sort of thing but um, as I got older I really developed a passion for drawing um, and decided I wanted to pursue that instead. Okay so we'll give them some little flowers. Let's see. The next question was between Home Alone, E.T., and The X-Files. Who's my fa favorite character to draw and why? 
Ooh, that's a toughie. <laughs> um, let me think. I mean, each character is, always has its um different fun things about it uh, to draw because they all have such different personalities. But I think maybe some of my favorite characters were maybe um, Marv and oh, I'm forgetting the other guy's name. <laughs> I'm so bad with names. Um, the other villain in Home Alone, Marv and um, I'm sure I'm sure you guys know. Oh, so embarrassing for getting names on a live stream. Um, but yeah, the, they had such um. Yes, Harry, thank you. <laughs> um, they have it's it's so much fun drawing villains. I think because uh, they have such um fun expressions. I guess and like um, it was kind of fun to draw them. Um, being kind of uh tortured by Kevin. <laughs> I might try some smoother paper. Um, let's see, because if it's doing this on watercolor paper to see if we can maybe paint it later, but maybe I'll try um, drawing some ATs on smoother paper so I can get a little bit more detail in, I think. Let's see. Um, what can we have him doing? I guess, hmm. Does anybody have any, any favorite scenes from E.T.? Oh, I think my favorite one, maybe we'll draw him in that pile of stuffed animals. That was probably one of my favorite scenes in the E.T. movie, just because his eyes are so funny. Like, he's trying to blend in with all the stuffed animals and that sort of thing. Um, So when I was designing E.T., I think the most important thing to make him cute was giving him these, like, really big round eyes. Um, I think that really captured him. So when he was sitting in the stuffed animals, I kind of put them a little bit off-center in the book. Um, so they felt a little bit, I guess, goofy. <laughs> Oh, the lawnmowers are out. Uh, I'll just close the window. Hopefully that will help a little bit. Oh, I realize I'm drawing his body again. Uh, I was going to draw some stuffed animals in there. I'll just get rid of that. So when I'm drawing E.T. in a scene, I'll kind of like roughly um, block some things out. So if you're doing kind of a spot illustration, kind of the round circles would kind of be where I'm blocking in the heads for the illustration. Maybe I'll kind of give him, give him kind of a round composition.
I was reading today that E.T., um, when they're designing his character for the movie, that they used um, Albert Einstein and a pug as kind of the inspiration for the character. And I was looking at him and I was like, oh, yeah, you can really see kind of like the kind of like wrinkly pug in his face. And um, I guess the Albert Einstein, I guess, would be his his eyes, right? Kind of those like kind, soft eyes. Um, so I was asked about my favorite artists. Oh, I have so many. I'd say kind of the classic um, artists. So like, I really like Norman Rockwell. Um, Evan Earle is one of my favorites, especially um, when kind of looking for inspiration um, for how someone approaches drawing trees and that sort of thing. Um, he's probably my favorite uh Let's see who else. So many. I love a lot of the work that's being done in animation right now. There's so many brilliant people out there. Um, let's see. What do I have? I have like a dog, I guess. Let's see. Let's see some more teddy bears. Does anybody have any other favorite scenes from E.T.? I'd love to hear um, what kind of your favorite moments are from the movie, along with the uh, stuffed animal scene where he's kind of like hiding, hiding in all the stuffed animals from the mom. I think one of my other favorite ones is when he's interacting with a dog in the movie for the first time. I'm like a huge dog fan. <laughs> so I love the idea of E.T. kind of um, becoming friends with a dog in the movie. The stuffed animal is a little bit creepy. Oh yeah, flying the bike. That's a pretty classic scene. When I was re-watching the movie, I didn't realize that there's two scenes where they're flying the bikes. But I think my favorite one, the one where they're going to the little meadow to set up E.T.'s kind of communication device. That one's pretty cool, but um, the one thing that I loved about E.T. was the lighting in the movie and the last scene where all the kids are on the bikes flying over in front of that big orange sun is just such a beautiful beautifully lit scene. So I think that's my favorite part of the bike riding one. Um, do I have a favorite dog breed or a favorite breed to draw? Um, so right now, um, I have a little puppy. Um, well, I guess she's not a puppy anymore, but my dog's name is Whiskey. She's a little border terrier. So I've been drawing her a bunch. Um, just trying E.T.'s little cute face again. Um, maybe let's draw him maybe levitating some some things when he was kind of putting together in the machine. Oh, also, we'll just throw this back in. If you're just joining us for the book, book pop challenge, uh, the promo code for, or the code for this event is phone home. So let's sketch in ET.
uh, do I have a favorite animated movie? Um, let's see. That one's a tough one too. I always have to think about all these questions when it comes to thinking about favorites because I'm one of those people who's super indecisive and I'm just like, I love everything. Um, let me see. I love all animated movies, but I guess, um, you know, it's talking about Ivan Earl kind of earlier. And he did a lot of the design work in Sleeping Beauty. So let's say my favorite is Sleeping Beauty, but I love like most animated films. And the next question is, what are my favorite things or scenes to draw? Um, that one's a tough one, too. Uh, I, I love drawing scenery. Um, it's, it's one of my favorite things to do. So, like, um, having kind of an illustration where I get to draw kind of the large backgrounds that have maybe their, like, large forest scenes. Um or kind of cityscapes or that sort of thing where kind of a character sort of entering kind of um kind of like setting up the mood at the beginning of a book um those are kind of my favorites because I love to put in a lot of detail into things oh I just thought of something that I also love to draw hold on we'll get back to this but um I don't know if anybody loves E.T.'s little expressions. If you notice in the movie, his neck gets really long, kind of when he's scared. But that moment where he's um, meeting Gertie for the first time, when he's kind of like, throws this little like, long arms up the air and kind of like, super scared or surprised I guess I don't know if he's really scared but shocked is one of my favorites So I think going back to kind of my process too, like you can see my drawings are pretty rough. Um, so when starting the illustrations in the book, I'll always start them off as these pencil sketches, but um, I always tighten things up on the computer. So when I'm doing an illustration for the book, I'll do these tight drawings, and then I'll scan them in and then I'll kind of clean them up, um, make sure the proportions are right, sometimes fiddle around with the expression. Um, so I do have a question about if I use Kyle Webster's brushes and I do um, so one of the things that I did when I found Kyle Webster's brushes is I incorporated them in with my own. There's a few in there that are really great at um, mimic 
mimicking traditional media. So a lot of my inspiration comes from the 1960s sort of illustrations, kind of like from the golden books um, and that sort of thing. Um, I love that era and also traditional media. Um, so his brushes are really great to do that. And like, it's fun to sort of play around with them and see which ones work best. And I'll kind of make my own set um, from those brushes. But it saves a lot of time. Um, it's kind of almost finding like paintbrushes um, in a store or something when, when using those brushes. But I'd highly recommend them if you love uh, illustrating in Photoshop. They're perfect. So it's interesting to see in that scene where E.T.'s kind of like putting together his little uh, machine uh, over like which pieces um, he's used from things in Elliot's house. Um, so that's something I had to kind of go in and study and as lucky people had put um, the actual props online. I'm sure they're in storage someplace still or in a, a movie museum or something. but. Um, is interesting to see what pieces they kind of had E.T. kind of thinking about uh, using when putting together his communication device. So he had the little speaking spell and an umbrella and all these little like pieces he just found to make kind of this communication device. I think there was a fork. As a kid, I always wanted to invent things like this. I think I tried to make my own um, pinball machine or uh, out of just like some, some nails and elastic bands. It looked really ugly and it never worked and it was so disappointing, but I love to kind of um, make things um, from things as well. So this is a fun scene to draw. Let's see, there's a record player. Um, so I had a question. Do you draw from physical reference or do you draw from memory? Um, so I always use reference to a certain extent uh, when drawing my pictures. So like for, for E.T. I definitely was referencing the actual movie. Um, it's It's a good jumping off point. You can't Unless you're making something that's super photorealistic, you can't really copy things, but you can sort of take the way something looks um, and kind of adjust it and play with the shapes and kind of like stretch it and compact it or take certain things out. Um, so for instance, for E.T., he had a, a lot of little wrinkles and stuff in his face and that I think is what makes him a little bit scary sometimes to some people. Um, so I tried to minimize those a little bit um, when working on his character. So that's kind of how you can look at something and sort of take the best parts from it and then kind of create something on your own. Um, I find working from memory, unless I know something really well, can be quite difficult. So something I like to do or something I talk about when I go to uh, elementary schools to talk about drawing uh, with kids is um, drawing something like a bicycle. So for E.T., there are a lot of bicycles in there. And I always had to make sure that I was looking at the bicycle um, reference for one before drawing one myself because there's so many different parts of a bicycle and you can easily get something wrong and then someone will look at it and be like, that's not a bicycle, that's not how it works. So it's, that's why it's important to look at reference so everybody who's looking kind of at the illustrations um, they can, everybody can sort of relate if you go from reference. So, 
feel like I'm a little bit more warmed up right now. So maybe we'll try, maybe we'll try painting. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, I guess. Um, so I think we can draw ET just kind of standing in one of the little forested areas, kind of like at the beginning of the movie where he's kind of exploring after all the ETs have sort of landed. Um, So the next question is, um, what did I draw, or what did I like drawing most when I was a kid? Um, hearts and rainbows. I drew hearts and rainbows all the time for everything. If one of my aunts or uncles had a birthday, they would get a beautifully drawn hearts and rainbows card. I just like using all the colors on a piece of paper, and I just thought, yes, rainbows are perfect because I get to use every single color I want to. And then hearts, I think I just like drawing hearts. No real reason behind it. I guess maybe they're easy. <laughs> Um, the next question is, is there anything I don't like drawing? Um, I think there are some challenges <laughs> that sometimes I find. There's nothing that I, like, hate drawing. Well, I think sometimes, okay, so my biggest challenge is drawing cars. I don't know what it is about cars. I think it's kind of, they're more of a mechanical um, sort of thing. So they're a little bit more rigid and I'm a little bit more kind of like loose in my drawings which is maybe why I like drawing kind of like trees and plants and characters a little bit more um but they definitely present a unique challenge I don't dislike drawing them but they're definitely like difficult so in this forest we'll kind of throw in I think I saw earlier that someone suggested a bunny so maybe I'll put a little bit bunny kind of like peeking out maybe of some of the, the woods. Maybe kind of watching E.T. Um, oop, there's a few questions that I might have missed. Um, do I like Studio Ghibli or Rankin Bass classics? And yes, I love both. I have kind of fallen behind on some of the Ghibli movies and I should definitely make plans to watch uh more and Rank Bass I love I love um like a lot of those stop motion films so I really love the stuff that Leica is doing right now 
Um, their stuff's just gorgeous. And my favorite movie, I think of all time, is The Wizard of Oz. All right, so this is kind of good, I think. Let me just move his nose up a little bit. And then I think we have 20 minutes left, so we'll give it a try painting. We'll see how it goes. Um, I've been working on my gouache painting recently because I love those. Um, like I said, I love all that traditional gouache painting. Um, so I'm going to use um, acrylic gouache, this kind of stuff. And I have another question. What's my favorite Studio Ghibli movie? And that's definitely um, My Neighbor uh, Totoro. That one is so cute and so precious. Um, yeah, I just fell in love with that one. I always want to go to the Miyazaki M Museum in Japan. Um, it seems like... I always hear great things about it. I don't know if any of you have been there, but... Um, I know you have to get your tickets way in advance. So I'm just mixing up some colors. Real quick. some of the colors I'm going to start with. So you've got kind of the blue green that I'm going to lay down for the background. And then um, I've got the orange for E.T.'s body and then we'll kind of go from there. So if you haven't used gouache before, it's kind of like, almost like a cross in between like watercolor and uh, kind of maybe acrylic. It's um, water soluble, but uh, it dries kind of opaque. So you kind of have to make sure that you aren't going to paint over areas because you can't really go back in over top of them without mixing colors. as much as I can in 20 minutes but if I don't finish I'll definitely finish this up and repost it on Instagram afterwards I think I believe um this kind of paint is a Japanese kind of gouache so it's actually um let me just double check before I say Actually, I found this out from one of the background painters who worked on a Ghibli movie. He was watching some YouTube videos, some tutorials about how they paint, and they recommended this acrylic gouache. So you actually, I, I lied before, um, regular gouache, you can't 
uh, go and paint over, but acrylic wash, it's acrylic based, so you can paint over it um, just like acrylic paint, but it dries um, matte, so there's no sheen to it. Um, so where can I find the sketchbook and colors? Uh, the colors, um, you can get on Amazon, or I think uh, Dick Blick's Art Supplies, they carry this kind of paint. Um, or check your local art stores, they probably carry, they carry at least gouache for sure. And then um, for the sketchbook, it's a, uh, I'm just trying to think, I'm trying to remember. Let's just quickly. It's a watercolor sketchbook by Moleskin. Um, it's the eight and a half by 11 book. So you can get that at local bookstores um, or art stores. I've seen it, definitely, um, or online. So I'm just going to put kind of like a blue wash in the background. It'll go a little bit greener to make it stand out from the grass. that question about how fast does it dry um it dries pretty quick uh, if you want it to dry faster um one of the techniques that you can use is kind of using a hair dryer that way you can speed up the process So I always like um, throwing one sort of color over everything before. So when designing the digital illustrations, I kind of did a similar sort of thing. So I used the blue-green um, for a lot of the foliage for E.T.'s in the forest. And then um, E.T. himself made bright orange. And kind of taking the ideas um, from the film. Like I said, like I like to reference a lot of the movie lighting from E.T., and then just kind of pumping it up so we make a really fine book as well. So another question is, um, do I find these easier to use than watercolor? Um, I haven't worked with a lot of watercolor, um, so I can't really compare. Uh, most of my work, like I said, is done digitally. So the uh, ET book um, was all done in Photoshop. Um, I just like these because they're, I like working a little bit more opaque and having something that you can kind of go back and paint with. Or paint over. That's why I use the acrylic gouache because I wanted a little bit more flexibility um, when kind of painting. But I don't paint very often. Um, this is kind of just a special thing for book pop this week. But it's definitely great to break out the paints and do something a little bit different.
So when I'm illustrating ET on the computer or painting like I am today, I always start with um, kind of flat colors and then I'll go in over top and add all the details in afterwards. So we're just starting off with kind of his orangey base. So another question um, is whether I share my digital process like this. And yes, I do, actually. Um, if you go to the Quirk Books blog page, I believe there is a post that went up yesterday. And it's all about the X-Files, Earth Children Are Weird, which is another book that's coming out um, with Quirk in the next... It's coming out August 15th. And um, there I talk with Jason... Oh, I'm so bad at saying names. <laughs> He's going to kill me. Um, I talked to Jason, um, one of the people at Quirk Books, about how the X-Files was created. And if you scroll to the very end of the article, there's a time lapse about how I created the cover, um, I believe, um, from the X-Files. Or, yeah, the X-Files, Earth Children Are Weird. just one more time if you're just joining us um, for the book pop challenge the code um, for this is phone home just in case you didn't catch that before so now that everything's mostly blocked in it might walk in his eyes but um, I'm gonna start adding the shading in Uh, the question is, how long did it take you to finish the illustrations for a whole book like the T book? Um, so from start to finish, um, from scratch, in including kind of creating the characters and sketching, um, it probably takes around three months, sometimes a little bit longer, uh, depending on the book. But I think E.T. from start to finish was three months. Just going to make sure it's mostly dry so I don't. Drag my hand over it. Uh. 
So an illustration inside the ET book, one of those um, big spreads. So like two pages when you open up the book, that can take, usually it takes me about, um, Twelve to eighteen hours for the whole thing to at least um do all the color work and creating the final illustration. So I'm just going in and touching up his eyes a little bit. So one of the techniques when, I, when I'm kind of like adding in all the details, whether it's a digital ET illustration or one that's being hand painted like this, I use dry brushing, which is kind of where you put the paint on the brush and use um, kind of a paper towel like this. And then you just kind of like dry out the brush a little bit. Um, it just creates a little bit of a softer look um, in the shading gives you a little bit more texture which is something I'm a fan of big fan of um when creating my illustrations so one of the questions is is there a sci-fi or fantasy character that you have always wanted to do a book about but haven't yet hmm well I know this isn't a sci-fi or fantasy character but it's along the the movie lines um I've always wanted to do a Jurassic Park book because I think that would be really fun but I'm not sure if you can make it appropriate um for all ages because I don't know about you um but the first time I watched Jurassic Park I was eight and uh, I had, I've, I still have nightmares about dinosaurs um, to this day. So I don't know if it could be kid friendly, but if somehow it could be kid friendly, I'd really love to do a children's book um, with Jurassic Park. One thing I like to do when drawing or illustrating my characters too is giving them kind of like rosy cheeks early and maybe a little bit of like a little bit of a rosy tinge around their nose. Not too much, but just enough to make them feel, I find it makes them feel more alive and sometimes in the hands it's good to add a little bit of that in there as well.
Uh, I think it's so funny that T-Rexes have those little tiny hands and they can't do anything with them. <laughs> I would think it would be funny to uh, draw like a T-Rex with kind of one of those little T-Rex reachers. You know, like the ones that you get at like a zoo or something. I just think it's so funny. So I think that's looking pretty good. And then maybe we can go in and add the line. Oops, I missed a piece on his arm. It's a little bit dark. A Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory book would be awesome. Although I'm a huge fan of Quentin Blake, who I think does the illustrations for the uh, for the um, original Willy Wonka novel. I don't know if I could compete with that. <laughs> um, so I think we're running a little bit short on time. I'm going to quickly go in and add a few, a uh, little bit of the line work um, to his body. And then I'll finish this up later and post it up for you guys and I also just want to say thanks so much for joining me today um as I took over Quirk's Quirk Books is um live feed it was so much fun answering all your questions